Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including leaks of Tesla's next car, new price increases, EV tariffs, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, while Tesla is best known for their lineup of electric vehicles, they have a number of other important business ventures across the entire electric industry. Tesla Energy, for example, is their energy storage division, which specializes in producing large battery packs to store solar energy and protect you during blackout. They also build massive megapack battery sites that allow for energy to be stored and dispersed at the grid level. Even though this isn't considered their main business, Tesla has excelled in this space since entering it nearly a decade ago. The magazine Energy Digital has just ranked Tesla Energy as number one on their list of battery storage companies. They beat out a number of high profile suppliers like Vivint Solar, GE, Vernova, and Panasonic. In their article, they talk a lot about the massive growth that the company has seen since starting their energy venture. Quote, Tesla Energy's energy storage business has never been better. Despite only launching its energy storage arm in 2015, as of 2023, the company had an output of 14.7 gigawatt hours in battery energy storage systems. While Tesla is predominantly known for making electric vehicles, their forays into energy storage show how deep their commitment to electrification runs. Home and grid scale energy storage solutions aren't just good ways to save money for their customers, but also are necessary to make the grid more robust and to make large scale renewable energy more feasible. Tesla Energy isn't the only energy storage company out there, but they are certainly one of the most advanced and innovative. Their virtual power plant initiative is a project that lets Powerwall customers sell their energy back to the grid in cases of extreme weather or power outages. Their Megapack battery sites have been installed around the world to provide stable energy storage solutions in places affected by severe weather. Tesla Energy is a great company under Tesla's umbrella, and this just goes to show how important and effective their work truly is. Next up today, Tesla has been gearing up for a while now for what could be their most important product launch ever. There have been a lot of contradictory rumors around their upcoming affordable EV, but we know for certain that what they are currently working on is going to be a major moment for the company, the RoboTaxi. The RoboTaxi is a vehicle designed specifically with autonomy in mind. If achieved, it will not have a steering wheel or pedals at all. This project was first announced back at the Cyber Rodeo in April of 2022, and now its official unveil is coming up very soon. Elon simply posted on X, Tesla Robotaxi unveil on 8.8. While autonomy has always been at the forefront of Tesla's mission, it's becoming increasingly clear that Elon is somewhat betting the whole company on the success of their FSD program. If Tesla is able to deliver on that promise, that could pay off in a major way for the company. In fact, it would be one of those historical moments that people talk about for generations. Elon has promised the arrival of true FSD for a very long time, and Tesla enthusiasts have always known to take those comments with a grain of salt. But with the recent advancements we've seen in FSD version 12, it seems like Tesla has genuinely made a huge leap, and each new update only makes it more advanced. We don't have exact numbers, but first-hand usage of FSD version 12.3 has seemingly already done a lot to reduce the need for driver interventions. Sometimes the car still behaves in ways that make you want to take over or make you need to take over, but those moments are getting more infrequent. In a post on X, Elon gave us some insight into the upcoming version 12.4. He said 12.4 goes to internal release this weekend and limited external beta next week. Roughly five times to 10 times improvement in miles per intervention versus 12.4. If that number turns out to be true, then that could do a lot for the usability of FSD. Then, in just a few weeks, we're going to see version 12.5 come out, which should add even further improvements. Elon said 12.5 will be out in late June. We'll also see a major improvement in MPI and is single stack. No more implicit stack on highways. At the same time, Elon Musk visited China in order to discuss the rollout of their FSD software, and those talks appear to have been productive. Baidu, a Chinese internet company, is now considering using Tesla's upcoming robo-taxi in their Chinese rideshare services. This is the same company that Tesla is working with to create Chinese navigation maps for their software in order to bring FSD to that country. According to a report from Shanghai Securities News, Baidu will use Tesla's specific application models and the pace of entering the Chinese market, etc., and consider possible cooperation opportunities. Baidu already offers their own autonomous rideshare service that uses their own vehicles, so it's very interesting that they could be bringing Tesla vehicles into the fold. In much more direct robotaxi news, a modified Model 3 was spotted out testing that could give us some big insight into that upcoming product. This Model 3 was spotted near Palo Alto, California, and features some unique changes to the exterior. The side mirrors have been completely removed, and it has a number of both new and rearranged cameras. In this photo, we can see what appears to be a front fender camera positioned to stick out from the car a bit more than usual, along with a similar situation in the rear camera. 
Here's a close-up on that rear camera, right above the stock rear camera. It's possible that these positionings help with visibility or that they are simply better all-around cameras being tested in rough prototype form. Here is a closer angle on that front camera as well. It's definitely a design that can sit flush, but is currently in its extended position. Even with an inch further travel away from the car, that could do a lot to add visibility for these cameras. The more noticeable camera though is the one that replaces the camera in the B-pillar. The B-pillar is stripped and inside the car mounted to the rear window is a very large housing for a side camera. From this angle, we can clearly see this camera. It seems to be quite a different position than usual and purposely has a very large housing. Now, this could take two different angles. On the one side, Tesla could be doing some testing for something they've wanted to ship for a long time, no side mirrors on their cars. That could be a part of this since the Model 3 is missing side mirrors here, but more likely this is Tesla testing camera positioning for the RoboTaxi. The thing about FSD development is that Tesla has been seeing any possible issues with their original camera placement decisions and having to deal with them. Maybe they nailed it, but it's entirely possible that as we've approached FSD version 12, they are seeing that for a dedicated robo-taxi, it would be much better to have those camera positionings slightly shifted. With a dedicated robo-taxi, there's going to be less need for the cameras to be seamlessly integrated into the car. For Tesla's current cars, they are definitely there if you look, but they are hardly noticeable at first glance. They'll definitely still want to go that direction for a robo-taxi, but everyone will understand if the side cameras stick out a bit, considering that's how it sees what's around it in order to drive for you. And there are no side mirrors, and no one to actually look at those side mirrors. It's interesting to see how large the camera housing mounted to the rear window is, but I doubt we'll see something that large on the actual robo-taxi. Elon has called this the cyber cab, so it will still come with a very clear design. With that said, I would not be surprised at all if once we see the unveil of the RoboTaxi, these camera positionings match exactly that car. They are doing early validation testing with where their next generation sensors will be, and it's exciting to see. Like I mentioned earlier, Tesla is betting big on the RoboTaxi and autonomy, so a lot of these updates are pretty big deals. This product is a real make or break moment for the company, and I can't wait to see what they show us on August 8th. Real quick note for the Performance Model 3 that Tesla just released. Tesla just raised the price of that car by another $1,000, likely due to particular popularity there. It's now $54,990. The odd thing right now for that trim is that it's the only Model 3 that qualifies for the tax credit, but upgrading paint now takes that car above the $55,000 tax credit price cap. That definitely limits options for many customers, but that's likely why Tesla made an interior change there. To upgrade to the black and white interior, it's now no extra charge. Next up today, we've talked a lot about a major source of competition in the EV market coming from China. Their high quality, low cost electric vehicles have been making huge splashes across Asia and Europe, where they can dramatically undercut local competition. Many Western automakers have expressed concerns that these vehicles are being sold so cheaply that it's impossible for them to compete. Many have called for higher tariffs on imported Chinese vehicles as a protective measure, and now it seems like that will come true. The US has announced that they are implementing huge new tariffs on Chinese-made electric vehicles and other imported tech. Electric vehicle tariffs from China were already pretty high at 25%, and that has already done a lot to keep them from being introduced to the US market. Now that tariff is expected to quadruple up to 100%. The U.S. has introduced a lot of measures to encourage domestic production of electric vehicles and stop the encroachment of Chinese industry into the process. The battery and mineral sourcing requirements for the federal EV tax credit specifically limits the amount of materials that can be sourced from foreign entities of concern like China. This measure gets stricter every year and is designed to make automakers pursue domestic production so that they can stay eligible. Even with these measures, if some Chinese automakers decided to pursue the American market, that could still be a major disruptive force in the market. One of the cheapest models available from BYD starts at around $12,000 in China. Even with a 100% markup, that still means that car would only cost about $24,000, significantly cheaper than most electric vehicles on the market in the US. Now, I can't say for certain whether these companies would try to sell these vehicles in the U.S. with this tariff, but it does go to show how important domestic competition is. While a lot of automakers have been developing affordable EVs, nobody has brought a great option to market in the U.S. yet. 
There have been some rumblings that companies like BYD might start building factories in Mexico as a way of getting around US tariffs on Chinese vehicles. While it seems likely that these automakers will go through with building factories in Mexico, they may face some resistance to bringing them to the US from there. The federal government is considering implementing penalties on EVs made in Mexico by Chinese companies specifically. The mechanism through which they would do this is unclear, but it does seem like the government is pursuing plenty of means to keep Chinese EVs out of the US specifically. While I definitely understand the concerns that come from the market being flooded by cheap Chinese subsidized EVs, it does show just how important domestic competition is. EVs have been getting cheaper over the years, but the biggest obstacle to their mass adoption is still price. Once these companies are able to start offering truly affordable vehicle options, then a lot of these fears should be greatly diminished. Long term, even if Chinese EVs can make it to the US with no tariffs, they should be able to compete fairly with domestic competition. Next up today, Tesla is going through a huge internal shakeup right now, and it looks like it's having a big impact all throughout the company. Early rounds of layoffs saw over 10% of the company let go in one sweep, and then the company subsequently lost several major executives, ones we've talked about a lot in these videos over the years. Well, two more key individuals have just left the company, and one of them was overseeing their latest product, the Cybertruck. Renji Zhu, the director of manufacturing for Cybertruck Production, has announced on LinkedIn that he has left the company. It's currently unclear whether he was let go in another round of layoffs or if he simply decided to leave the company of his own accord. In his post, he said, after triumphing the epic launch of Cybertruck program and ramping the volume production line to the steady 1K per week throughout orbit for the past 16 months in Gigafactory, Texas, also seven weeks after the fifth Tesla-versary, my adventure with this great company has come to an end. It sounds like his departure was pretty harmonious, but still that doesn't give us a ton of insight as to why he left. As he mentions, he was a five-year Tesla veteran where he was previously in charge of Model 3 and Y production out of Giga Shanghai. Shanghai is one of Tesla's most successful and productive factories, so it makes sense that he was brought over to handle Cybertruck production. In a short amount of time under his leadership, the Cybertruck team was able to ramp up its production to a steady 1,000 units per week. The ramp up seems to be moving along nicely, so that does make his departure all the more confusing. Tesla has recently been letting go of a lot of key employees and longtime company veterans. At the same time, Tesla's head of product launches, the seven-year veteran Rich Otto, just left the company due to low morale among employees and executives. He said, quote, why leave? It's a company I love and that has given me so much, but has also taken its pound of flesh. Great companies are made up of equal parts great people and great products, and the latter are only possible when its people are thriving. The recent layoffs that are rocking the company and its morale have thrown this harmony out of balance, and it's hard to see the long game. It was time for a change. As a part of these layoffs, we saw Tesla let nearly their entire supercharger team go. That was a huge shock to the industry, as access to their extensive supercharger network has been one of the most lucrative elements of buying a Tesla. Elon reiterated their commitment to expanding the supercharger network, but other companies were already pouncing on what looked like a great opportunity to catch up to the industry leader. The future of supercharging seemed unclear, and now it seems like Tesla is changing their strategy once more. Only a few weeks after those firings, it seems like Tesla is hiring back at least some of the supercharger team. A source within the company told Bloomberg that one of the returning personnel was Max DeZieger, the former director of charging for North America. He was an important manager within the division under previous head of charging, Rebecca Tanucci. At this point, it's unclear what his new role will be or how many of the supercharger team will actually be brought back. Shortly after the firing, charging companies like Revel announced that they were looking to hire some of the former Tesla staff. So it remains to be seen how many of these people will eventually come back. This wouldn't be the first time that Elon Musk walked back a big cost-cutting measure after passions had cooled a little bit. Shortly after his acquisition of Twitter, Elon let go nearly half the company before hiring some of them back soon after. Again, we're not exactly sure how much of the supercharger team will return to the company or how many even want to, but starting to rehire does make it a bit clearer how they will be able to continue supercharger installations after all. Then again, the only person we know has actually returned to the company was one of the higher up managers. This could have simply been a measure to help clear up some of the chaos left behind with suppliers and site owners after the whole charging team was suddenly let go. Right now, it's a lot of a mess, especially on the surface, but we'll see how this all pans out in the coming months. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. While Ford seems to have big plans for the future of electric vehicles, in the short term, they are making some pretty big cuts to that division. In just the last few months, we've seen Ford delay massive EV investments, cut F-150 Lightning production, and shrink the workforce at the factory where they produce that truck. 
All of this news comes out as we learn that Ford's EV losses have only been growing as of late. After recently slashing their EV prices, Bloomberg reported that Ford has been losing over $100,000 on every EV produced in Q1. That amount is more than double what they were losing per vehicle one year ago. As such, Ford has decided to cut battery orders from their suppliers in order to reduce spending. All of Ford's battery suppliers reiterated that their relationships with the automaker are the same as before and that their contracts still stand. A Ford spokesperson didn't comment, but it certainly seems like another in the long list of setbacks towards their EV goals. The company expects Mustang Mach-E losses to reach $5.5 billion this year, and while they expect this to improve, it could be a while before that happens. While Ford is working on some exciting stuff like their own upcoming affordable EV, this story just goes to show how hard it is for automakers to electrify. Making a compelling vehicle, producing it at scale, and making it profitable can be a very daunting task, even for one of the largest car manufacturers in the world. While I do think shying away from EVs is a short-sighted move, it's easy to understand why when they're posting such big losses. Hopefully they are able to streamline their supply chain and production lines so that they can continue their journey to electrification in a more financially stable way. With that said, this is another illustration of how much Tesla has a lead here. Ford is losing that much per vehicle and Tesla is profitable on their vehicles. While Teslas have some of the most advanced infotainment systems of all vehicles, Rivian is quickly catching up, adding new features to their existing R1 line. These vehicles will soon be equipped with the YouTube app and Google Cast video streaming, coming via a future over-the-air software update. So owners can soon stream videos to their 15-inch center touchscreen and mirror content to the screen from a smartphone or tablet. That's something you can't do on a Tesla. First, the vehicle has to be in park, then you just connect your phone or tablet to the vehicle's Wi-Fi hotspot and tap the Google Cast icon. Once connected, you can control playback directly from the R1's display and can access other apps on your phone. Then if you shift into drive, your content will pause automatically. Rivian has said these features are quote, coming soon, but we don't have an exact date yet. I think casting is actually a pretty cool feature that I would love to see come to a Tesla vehicle. Because right now, if there's something you wanna watch on your phone and you wanna watch it on the bigger screen in your Tesla, it's kinda of hard to get it there. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see all the issues early Cybertruck owners are facing, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.